Hey guys, Trainer Toll here. Welcome to the stream tonight. Today is going to be an interesting one. I feel like we set out to shave my head and we accidentally produce an entire hour of television. Um, I'm going to add in Angie Mayhew. Hi, Angie. I can hear you Hi guys. again. You can hear me again? I, I can. Oh, okay. I can hear no, you can't. Okay. And Mona is squeaking things in the background. Yes. 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 We no, shot all of our dogs, so, so we, we locked them. Everybody is locked up outside. We figured if they're going to make noise, they're going to do it behind the house for an hour. How are you? Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, today is a day that you take one day at a time, and you do the best you can. And actually, this has given me a lot to focus on, so I'm yeah. glad to uh, to be involved in bringing awareness to St. Aldrich's and children's cancer research and how desperately it's needed. I saw that you made it out to Dragon Con. Uh, that was your first public appearance. Uh, Not a public appearance. You did a panel. I, That's a public appearance. That was I, like a public appearance. Totally. I needed to go see my people. I understand. In Dragon I Con. Needed, I needed to sing the song of my people. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that was very therapeutic. It was actually. It helped uh, a lot. So what I wanted to start and talk about is so many of the children that the Peter Mayhew Foundation impacted comes directly from children that Peter loved and, right. and families that reached out and, and families that you met through conventions. Um, do you want to talk a bit about some of those kids and uh, the happy and the sad? Yes, yes, I, I really do want to do that. I, I want to start out by focusing in on why research is so very important. And we all, we all, everybody that's watching here knows how important the research for kids' cancer is. We know that it, it doesn't get anywhere near the financing that some of the adult cancers do. And we've, We've pr pretty much all been touched by someone that's had a loss from childhood cancer, which is not the same thing as adult cancer. Right. But I have a personal story from my family. Um, when I was young, I had an aunt that uh, she was about 27, 28 years old, and she developed Hodgkin's disease, which was a big deal back way back when. And uh, towards the end... And she had two kids in diapers when this happened. Hmm. And towards the end of her life, as, as it got continued to get worse and worse, she allowed um, her body, basically, to be used as a guinea pig to help research for Hodgkin's disease. And if you fast forward to her grandchildren, one of her grandkids developed Hodgkin's disease when she was five or six years old and be, I think in part because my aunt was so willing to help with the research her grandchild isn't just alive and well but she is thriving and prospering and she is a wonderful young woman and I, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell any names or anything like that but sure. that's the kind of things that can happen and a lot of what we need to do is to pay this forward, and especially uh, with research into, into kids' cancers and all of the uh, – I, I, I personally, I know a bunch of kids right now that are going through it as well, and I don't know. Well, that's, that's a good segment. Let me bring – Judy, you want to come sit on this side? Um, so with me is, is Judy Sanders, and if you're a member of our Raid Bus community – uh, you've met Judy as she's come on the bus and been coming on the bus for all the, the whole time, all, all two years. Um, yeah. Do you have the pictures? I do. Um, we know uh, we're, we're involved in this for a terrible reason. Um, and it's it, it's because um, this is this is Alan. This is Judy's son who uh, made it to age five. And this is Rayleigh. Uh, Lisa's son, daughter, sorry, yeah. that um, she made it to about a year. Right um, after her first birthday. And, mm -hmm. and what were the particular types of cancer? Rayleigh had a brain tumor, 
Alan had a sarcoma, a soft tissue tumor that Got was it. Uh, in his spine. And, and you were telling me yesterday when we were doing the fundraiser that mm-hmm. there was uh, prostate cancer, as an example, receives more funding than all Child, of the... All childhood cancers combined. All, 12 all childhood major cancers combined. childhood cancers and prostate cancer, which affects people um, very late in their lives. And why, why do you think that is? Adults vote. Adults have a voice. Adults are in boardrooms. Okay. Um, people don't want to think about kids getting sick. You know. Um, you know. Be, we have a saying. It's like you're never you're you're never aware until you know you're never, you're not a cancer parent until suddenly right. you are. Yeah. And then suddenly you become aware of all these things. You don't think about other kids. You know, kids aren't supposed to die. I mean, you're not supposed to you're not supposed to predecease your child. Yeah. Um, right. And well, and, and and Jerry Stokes is going to join us uh, in, in a in a little bit. Um, he tells stories of, of the impact, not just medically, but then financially on getting the families to appointments, keeping the families nearby while treatments are happening. Um, the struggle is not just um, a medical one. You know, the struggle That's is right. financial. It the whole family. Right. Um, time yeah. off of work, time to, to, to stay. It's it's a. Uh, Sometimes you know there I, I I have I have friends who have very good um, you know workplaces where they they get the time off they were able to leave and come back and some people are devastated you know they 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 have they their careers are gone you know because you you, you need yeah. you can't just leave a child in a hospital you know um, you know somebody needs no, to be there can't. to make the medical decisions and you want to be there for your child too so um, it is really uh, quite a devastating it's, it's like one of those things you can't um, it is, not you know, be. Um, even the ones right, whose children right. survive. I mean, they go through, they have severe post-traumatic well, stress. One, one of the most high profile within the Star Wars communities is is R2KT, um, Alvin Johnson, who founded the 501st. Angie, do you want to talk a bit about, about Katie? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Katie Johnson was uh, really the start and the catalyst of, of the Mayhew Foundation and everything that that we work with and work for because uh, Alvin Johnson is the founder of the 501st Legion and he was the nutty guy that um, more than 20 years ago made some kind of a stormtrooper outfit and then tied it all together and came to a show and as it as it turned out Peter was actually there so we have literally the first stormtroopers from the first 501st convention picture. So after that happened and after, uh, after we got to know Alvin, we learned that uh, his daughter, Katie, who was like seven or eight years old at the time, uh, had been diagnosed with cancer. And it was, it was just the worst kind of cancer. Or it was brain cancer. Um, her little, her little sweet face uh, just became precious to all of us. You know, she yeah. And and one of our one of our Legion members that was in another state, he had an R two unit, and Katie wanted a pink droid R two, so he rushed to make that happen, and uh, Katie was signed up to do um the the disney make a wish which is another one of our things that we've helped with over the years but make a wish she was signed up for that and they had to because she was so ill they had to move her forward by i don't know a couple of months i think and uh alvin during this time while Katie was had been hospitalized and before she basically went home to pass, I think, uh, Alvin left, wrote a blog and it was the most amazing thing because it's one of those things where you don't want to bother somebody when they're going through such terrible times. Right. You don't, you, d- you don't want to, interfere you don't want to get in their way but you're desperate for information and so when peter and i would go out on the weekends we would we would rush home so that we could catch up on on uh, on alvin's blog and keep track of 
how Katie was doing, which doctor she was seeing. And every single bit of this was learning for us. And it was really important uh, in our lives. You know, it was something, and it doesn't, you know, this is something I would really encourage people to do is to, you know, find a, a place where you can put up a good blog or something like that so that you can share this so that other people can support you. You know, there's, there's a, there's a lot of reasons to, to, to use this type of information sharing, if you will. Yeah. It doesn't have to be on Facebook where everything looks, you know, sad and awful. But, a, a, you know, a blog that people can log into uh, might be a really good way to, to, you know, communicate with people without having to, you know, to be called and everything. Because, you well, know, those are, we, those are, we, those are rough times. People were asking me in our, in the trainer toll side of things, you know, we, the, the Mayhew Foundation people talk and then the trainer toll people, like it's separate groups of people. And somebody was like, Who's Jerry? And it was like, <laughs> let me tell you about Jerry. Jerry is a literal, this is what I said. Jerry is a literal angel on earth who, uh, an, an angel with some big balls who will, who will call <laughs> surgeons really? and, and, uh, and lie if he has to, 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 to get on the, to get on the phone, get, get somebody, uh, to, towards a transplant, towards a treatment, um, to really push these kids who, who need it to it really is. You know, into attention, but without somebody out there advocating mm -hmm. yep. and, and fighting for the research and fighting for, Hey, make this a priority. Um, yeah. it's not necessarily cancer related, but, and I know that I, I told, mm -hmm. I told Jerry, I said, this is a childhood cancer stream. We're going to stay on topic. <laughs> but, um, one of the, the technologies, uh, are we allowed to talk about that? I don't know what, one of the tech, I'll, I'll be vague. One of the technologies that 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 helped uh, a lung transplant recipient is now being miniaturized, so that it can be it doesn't take a whole plane and a whole fleet of, of ambulances and nurses and everything to transport somebody in that condition. And all of this is happening because he told a little white lie that he was a Time Magazine reporter so that he could get the head of surgery, the head of, of transplant surgery, on the yeah. phone. I mean, and our particular passion is research because we went everywhere. We talked, you know, our, our doctors tried, you know, um, you know, Rayleigh had uh, amazing um, uh, doctors, you know, mm. at St. Jude's, but the, the science isn't there right now. And so no, no matter what we do, there was, there, there wasn't anything that could save them yet. Um, and I, we're so close on so many things. Um, we have a, a good friend who's part of St. Baldrick's here in San Antonio he is a childhood cancer survivor. Hmm. He is also a physician researcher for childhood cancer himself now. He's, he's experienced everything himself. He's been a St. Baldrick scholar. He says, we can do it. We, the, the science is within reach. The technology is within reach. We need to have the money to spend on developing it and the will right. to do it. And putting those kids first. And so first. we need people yeah. on the ground, like Jerry, that make sure to make sure individual kids get the treatments that they can that they need. But we also need some things happening at higher levels uh, in Washington, uh, D.C. to make sure that the funding is there. Um, there's there's literally no private research for childhood cancers because um, for corporations the numbers aren't there. So it really falls upon the the government and private foundations like St. Baldrick's to put the money in to make sure that research gets done because it helps the kids and eventually, ultimately it helps everyone because mm. it's much easier to make those childhood cancer uh, cures that work for kids and then scale them up for adults. It does not work the other way around. Right. Right. So is this um, something that, um, say a letter to your senator and your congressman on behalf of St. Baldrick's could possibly help? Well, and that's lobbying is here, one of the things that they that they do. Um, it's lobbying. forty six mamas shave for the brave. Forty six mamas. Um, we have um, we shave uh, to raise money to raise awareness. And the last two mm -hmm. years, we've been going to Washington D.C. Uh, to lobby for the Star Act, which is what um, which is comprehensive childhood cancer research. So um, 
treatment research, survivorship, um, you know, data, uh, taking care of the data so that we, so everything stays on track. Um, a lot of the mamas have been to uh, Childhood Cancer Action Days in the mm. spring, um, which is um, childhood cancer organizations uh, from across the United States. So not just moms, but, you know, uh, uh, scientists, uh, doctors, you know, anybody that feels that they have a stake in childhood cancer research, which should be all of us. Um, and actually, Cure, uh, Cure Fest is happening right now in Washington, D.C., where um, everyone's sharing their stories with the people in Congress. And is, is that a shave for the brave type of event? Um, that is actually... Because there's 12 of you in a line <laughs> holding up, not not unlike this, where they're holding up the photos, yeah. and, and they shave them all... Now our event, our event in 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 July was a shaving event because uh, because we were, it was a St. Baldrick's event. Cure Fest is is another one is like childhood cancer. Beyond St. Baldrick's, it is multiple. Okay. Yeah, yep. it is St. Baldrick's is a part of it, but Got it. you know Got it's, it. a, multiple it's a multiple organization. It's a multiple organization, and there's the childhood cancer alliance so, is um, is huge. So can you talk they, about uh, this? They, they're really the working Star hard. Act? The Star Act. Isn't that what I heard you say? That that was what Congress needed to set a legislation? So the STAR Act, um, we started lobbying for that uh, several years ago when it was signed this year. Um, we're very grateful. Um, and just to, just to let you know that um, in this political climate, it was passed unanimously in the House and the Senate and signed in the White House. Um, and it, as it should be. Um, yeah, it covers, of it course. It stands for survivorship. So making sure that kids that, quote unquote, survive their treatment um, get the proper treatment throughout their whole life to make sure that they have mm. good, meaningful lives. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. T is for treatment. So research into mm -hmm. making sure that we have treatments that let kids survive, treatments that are less toxic, treatments that kind of have fewer side effects. Absolutely. Uh, and, um, yeah. And, and research, you know, just that's all we need. There are 12 subtypes of childhood cancer. Um, some have very good um, outcomes. Some are a death sentence from the day that they're diagnosed. Um, we have, unfortunately, we have several friends with DIP uh, children who had DIPG, and from that from that diagnosis, it's months, you know, maybe a year. Um, there's nothing to be done, um, and that desperately, desperately needs research to to make those outcomes better. Angie, absolutely. Um, Peter worked with so many kids and and met with so many kids. Can you tell us some of your favorite stories? The stories that you feel like made a big impact for Peter? Well, I think the situation with Katie and getting, helping her family to get, I mean, the foundation, okay, how about if I back up for a second? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we're live. I can't do that. All right, so Peter in the You're foundation. much better live. <laughs> Of course. When, it, when it's live, you don't overthink it. It's much better live. It's That's great. Right. Yeah, it's We'd be heart. on take 32 yeah. by now if, yeah. if this wasn't live. Well, from the heart. when you say Peter and you say the foundation, to me, those are the same thing. Yeah. So when I'm talking about, you know, Peter's favorites and the things that we've done with the foundation, they kind of they kind of coincide for me. Uh, but I'm not going to go all the way back to necessarily to Katie, but just know that she was the inspiration that, that started everything going with the foundation and our, uh, our families that we, what, what the foundation does, um, is that the, for the kids that are actually going through this, uh, and their families, we come in behind them and try to support those families as they're in the hospital, as they're going through treatment, uh, that's one of the things that we do in addition to, you know, helping hurricane victims or, right. you know, getting food together and all the other things that we do. But uh, we've had a lot recently of families that have been in the hospital, partly because of our angel, Jerry, who actually, you know, has found a lot of these kids. Uh, we have uh, the Atkins family that are in San Francisco right now, and their son has neuroblastoma. Yeah. And um, they come in once a month for his treatment, and sometimes and that's a miserable on treatment. That I mean, to, yes. to, to my eyes, that looked like the iron lung. Um, that, it almost and this is a does, kid. doesn't it? it this it's is a kid kind of in a, a box like this. Box, yeah. Yeah. Glass box. 
that they're, you know, all of their medication is hooked up to because their radiation treatment has, you know, has killed their immune system and they have right. to stay isolated. And his family goes to the Ronald McDonald house normally when they come in for this treatment. And uh, if they, if it's not available, then we come in behind that and we uh, put the family up and, you know, provide money for their food and so forth until that becomes available. And that's been, you know, one of our ongoing projects. Uh, we've, we've had uh, a lot, let's see. Oh, there's kids that Jerry has visited, all of our cancer kids in New Mexico, in Los Angeles. Um, he's been all over trying to, to get into the hospitals. And, and, and I'm going to be doing that as well in December at, uh, at Empire Con. Uh, we're going to come out and we're going to do some memorials. And I'm also planning a, a trip to the kids' ward. Mm. there at the hospital in Los Angeles. We were seeing uh, Tasha had posted um, Chloe at uh, the UNM Children's Hospital um, that they had just yes. visited there. And then and Chloe was able to ring the bell that she was cancer free today. And no way. Really? Yeah. yeah. And she's she's got these oh, adorable chills. Uh, I'll, I'll share it. I'll share it on the page. But she, she's got Wait, these adorable have pictures uh, of Chloe. Yeah, and she but she's got like like uh, kitty ears on and and her shaved yes, head she and, does. and she's um, yeah and she gets to ring her bell so uh, oh it, it was gosh, really oh my gosh that's so wonderful it was really cool she gets um, to ring her bell and grow her hair back and start yeah. start living her life that's wonderful I'm so so pleased that you know when when things turn out well. And it just it saddens us deeply when it doesn't, and we know that too many times it doesn't because the research just isn't finished, and we've got to be as supportive as we can for all of this. We have wow. scientists. We have to then we have to be, be sure that the families are okay because it's not something that you can you can't leave your kid when they're going no. through something like this. You can't say okay bye cancer kid you know you just you know we really want to try and help families when when we can uh, and when we know about them of course that uh, you know if hopefully the Ronald McDonald house is there and the families have a place to stay and they provide everything but then you know sometimes it doesn't happen that way so that's it's one, one of, of our the goals. most rewarding parts of our work is that we get to fill in the blanks when, uh, you know, Ronald McDonald House will take you in a week. Well, mm -hmm. where are you going to stay until then? And, right. uh, you know, our, our the times where we've been able to step in um, and you, you see the look on a family's face like you changed their life by just buying them a week's place to stay until the other thing kicked in and. Um, they're not all happy endings. No, um, no, they're not. Um, but Zoe, we want to keep. Zoe we just want to keep fighting until they are. Fell in love with Zoe. Um, yeah. I'll, I think the entire every member of the five hundred first was in love with Zoe, and Zoe passed away. Yeah. And it was. Um, I remember her. It was heartbreaking. It was um, precious. Yeah. Well, Angie, do you know the other? Um, the other condition of the fundraising that we did. What? If, if the <laughs> fundraising hit $1,000 on our bus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They get to shave my head. And That's I'm sitting right. there in this. I'm sitting here just and, knowing that it's coming. Um, and, and how much did they raise? Uh, $1,364. Uh, just screwing around on a bus playing Pokemon. Um, <laughs> I'm always so proud of these people. But uh, then we yes, had. Yes, me too. And you know, a, uh, I always, I, I hardly ever pass up a, a reason to mock you, Matthew. <laughs> it's it's just, for a good you know, cause. Just, just in, yeah, for a Where good cause, back. you know? Yeah. Faster yeah. than you'll, uh, faster than you'll think. <laughs> and I'm really, right. really, I'm really proud of you for, 
for volunteering to do this. This is this is thing. my second shave. Um, I know. They, this they is got the me. Thing, they got me it? last time. And it's funny because there's always a Comic Con right around the corner whenever they want to shave my head, so that then well, yeah, you, you're trying to get your picture taken with such and such at uh, <laughs> at whatever con. And so Laurel has come Hi, in. Laurel. Laurel is going to be taking the first swipe of this. Oh, and, and Emma Emma saw mom. She was like, Mom, mom, where? Where's mom? I like mom. She was crying by the door. She was wondering where you were. Um, if, if, if Laurel's not home, Emma follows me around. If Laurel mm-hmm. is home, she follows Laurel right. around. Um, of course. That's, that's the way it's supposed to work, isn't it? I don't think I can drag this interview out anymore to get out of my my fate you here. You cannot. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. I think I have to take the headphones off. You will uh, have to. So, well, you know, <laughs> that, that's a good reason to stall. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to switch off of this to a bigger view so everybody can see. I won't be able to hear you anymore, but uh, we'll be back okay, with you well, as soon as they're done. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Right? And then we'll call Jerry as soon as and we're done with call the show. Jerry. And we'll chat with Jerry about some of his excellent stories. Oi. He does. Yeah. Oi. My heart's <laughs> a little flutter. Oi. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for agreeing to the matching donation. So we're at 2,364. Plus, there's a donation link on the Facebook posts uh, all across every all these posts that have been shared. So uh, hopefully we can eke a couple more hundred dollars into the into Thank the you so much for the match, Angie. Thank you. Um, every dollar helps. But, you know, even more importantly, as I was telling the people on the bus yesterday, um, the awareness is huge, too. So exactly. to give your platform to our cause um, is priceless. Yeah. Thank this, you. That's really, you know, a lot about what it's about, but also uh, it's about... You know, anything we can do to raise awareness, especially for this, yeah. for this scourge. They're there putting you go. This, they're Same putting this ball. on with the, and it's, the headphones are sticking out of the apron. <laughs> All right, Angie, we'll let you go. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you afterwards. Cheers. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, here we go. Mm. Is that too tight? Nope. Good. I want to make sure it doesn't like mm. get all down your shirt. <laughs> You've got streams to do after. Everybody this. was giving me grief and saying, you know, it's going to wind up in your keyboard. It's going to wind. Oh God. It might wind up in your keyboard a little. Bit. That's what those novelty vacuum cleaners are for. All right. Yeah. I am proud of you. Oh, God, you you were going to go first. She loves going to go first. Big red button. I'm proud of you, and I love you. It's funny. Somebody turns on clippers, and normally you trust them. (laughs) Oh, she's going for the reverse. You don't trust me? Do you trust me? Oh, I trust you. That's the... Oh, boy. Oh, look at that. Let's see in the chat. Shave that look head. Look at look at look Shave at that. Shave that head. That's two swipes. You only got one. Ah! Well, she has to live with it, so I told her as <laughs> many swipes as she wanted. <laughs> well, we kind of need to make sure that it's even. No more faux hawk. He's got to live with it, too. <laughs> uh, y'all. Uh. Okay, show him the top. Show him the top. Ugh. <laughs> Oi. All right. That tickles. Oi. All right. She's holding my hand like I'm getting a flu shot. <laughs> Love it, baby. So, I didn't make it today, but it will, you will have them in time for your Wednesday stream. Oh? Ask me why I'm bald buttons. Ah. With pictures of Rayleigh and Alan. That's great. So people will know what your purpose and inspiration was. And I know I Wait, speak one last Lisa. little one little running there's, my there's oh, running my of, finger yeah. through my hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I played with oh. it last night too. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I speak for Lisa. Right? I feel like I'm getting a flu shot. <laughs> when I say how much we appreciate this. Like I told Angie, um, My job know. is to whine. 
my job, my, my job. <laughs> the awareness is huge. You know, so many people don't want to hear about it. And so to share the trainer toll platform <laughs> and to let us come on the bus while we're playing with our Well, game. but but you guys, you you didn't come on the bus expecting us to, you never would have asked for anything, you know, and you've never, you, you said, hey, we could do this. You know, you brought it up as an option and, you know, yeah. so. And of course, I absolutely enthusiastically embraced it. Ugh. Let's get this sideburn. Oh, you like it? Is it crazy? I do. You're, you're going to have me playing with your hair for a while. It's not necessarily a bad and thing, And so, right? I know we talked about last time there was a barber that was not friendly to keeping you trimmed up, but we're going to hook you Hi, up. Hi, Kathleen. We're going to hook you up with Mama Jocelyn. Okay. So I went to my the place that I normally get my hair did. And they said um, they were going to charge me forty dollars to clean up a bald head. It was like after you, you told them that you shaved it for right. For, I, I told them it was a, cha- a charity shave, and then they were like, "Yeah, that'll be forty dollars to trim the sides down." Okay, look down. Look down. Laurel's just going to sit here and play with my bald head. I need you to look down, like down. Point your nose down. Thank you. There we go. Get that divot. There we go. We would like this to be as even as possible so yes. it grows evenly. So it doesn't, you don't have tufts growing back. Yeah, this is definitely real. <laughs> oh, there is no, there is no bald cap here. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about moving because what are they going to do? Shave your hair funny? Uh, the clippers could cut you. <laughs> No one's hit me with a hairbrush yet, so it's going better than it did when I was a kid. <laughs> mm. All right, we got a couple things to clean up. Okay, and we'll get the brush. Sorry, guys, no stretch goals, no shaving my eyebrows. <laughs> Ed and Kai, thank you for the follow. Yeah, there goes the ear. No more ear. <laughs> I have to say, when Thank I you, shaved, Pedro. the first time I dove into the pool was Thank your tiger for the follow. We got the other, we got the other uh, sideburn? Yeah, the other sideburn is, is good. <laughs> Trying to make sure it's an even shave. So when you're when you're in the Air Force and they do your and they do this to you when you're in the Air Force, they say, "Do you have any knots on your head? Put a finger on them. And you're supposed to put a finger there. Otherwise, they will cut it off. Yeah, because there there is. Uh... Their only goal is to just get you bald and moving on. And we used well, to, to we used to do contraband. Things. We used to do contraband fades in the bathroom. We we would shave our sideburns back down to let our hair grow out on the top, and, and we'd get called into the office for contraband sideburns. Friar Tuck. Ah. Thank you, Kathleen, for the follow. Not noticeable now, but once they start growing out, those uh, little extra. Oh, sorry, Emma. Really contrast. My poor Emma. My Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma. Do you want to see that? Come here. Come here, baby. Yeah, the dogs are going to bark at me now. They're not going to recognize like, oh, me. Who's a stranger? Hi, Emma. Who's that? Emma is one of our foster dogs through Mystery Dog Rescue. Hi, Ems. Oh, okay. I still got kisses. There we go. I still got kisses. You still smell the same. Eyebrows from the K-pop ho. H-E-A-U-X. I love that. All right. I think we're good. Ugh. Hey. Ugh. It's almost the same as my... It's the stubble. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Did you get the unibrow while you were in there? No. 
yeah, I don't think you want me doing that. No, not, not with, with those. The big clip. Yeah, oh, that's a hate right here. Oh. oh, yeah. So William asked, "Can't you just donate without shaving?" You can absolutely donate without shaving. Um, so here's the thing: the shaved head is your calling card. It's an icebreaker. It's, an invitation. it's a it's an yeah. invitation to a conversation about why you why you did it. So somebody will say, "Why are you shaving your head?" And it's um. It was also a fundraising mechanism. Yeah. yeah, and the goal was is that if we raised a thousand dollars on our Pokemon Go raid bus, that um, then we'd be able to th then they'd get to shave my head. It was a perk. Um, and it looks like we didn't get any hair in the people, keyboard. I didn't see any. Yeah, no, Judy and I are right. We're, it we're all got sucked. It all got sucked right into the new PC. <laughs> that's that's where it went. Um, we're better than that. Thank you. Are we? Um, the the shave is, it's not just a calling card and it's not just a conversation starter where people will look at you and say, you know, why did you shave your head? And you, you can then, um, especially in Matt's case, as a white man with a shaved head, say, I shaved my head for charity. It's not, you know, anything <laughs> untoward. I am, I am not a, <laughs> I'm not a skinhead. I, I did this yeah. for charity. I did this for I'll have to stop open awareness. carrying at Walmart. No, yeah. I was not that guy. But it is. It was also. Uh, it people feels really wanted neat. to see it. You know, they wanted to. They wanted the opportunity to shave his head. They wanted to see him lose his hair because, you know, you're very proud of your hair. Like, let's be well. real. <laughs> you're very proud of your hair, and so removing it was kind of a. But also, a, you're I, willing to do this. I have the I'm luxury really of my hair growing back. You. Yeah. And. Not to go too far down that rabbit hole, but a lot of people don't have the luxury of their hair growing back. A lot of people, yeah. um, I, I have and a so, friend yeah, whose son shaved all, his head a today. A lot of people say, you know, it, like they shave in solidarity. You know, um, you know, there's, you know, people do it for awareness. People do it for fundraising. People do it for solidarity. They or some combination of uh, of all three. <sighs> that is a bald head. See. Some little that is a very right bald here. head. Hi, Ryan. Let me grab those clippers. Every time you move, baby, I find yeah, more loose hairs. Okay. What do you think? Does it, it suit me? Hair? Yeah, is it a loose hair that stuck to his head? <laughs> no. Is it a little thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> We should have grabbed Andre's brush. He's got one of those. Not to be offensive, but I don't believe in charities unless you work for one. I work for three. <laughs> I am a board member and director of the Peter Mayhew Foundation, a foster for Mystery Dog Rescue, and a frequent fundraiser for St. Baldrick's Foundation. This is not my first shave for St. Baldrick's. No. If you go to the uh, Trainer Toll uh, uh, fundraising page on the St. Baldrick's website, you'll see the video of uh, his shave two years ago when Mama Lisa got a chance to do it. So this was my turn. She was very happy. Oh, and yeah. Judy was very nice to share it with me since <laughs> I could not be there last yes. year. But this is for all the kids that, you know, aren't being represented in the amount of research that's being done. I've got like a bald spot. You see that? It, oh, it's the shine. <laughs> it's I'm going to have to put foundation on my scalp. Um, maybe just powder. <laughs> Homer, did you shine your head in the shino ballo? Uh. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I appreciate that. You also Aww. look really good. You like it? I well, did. that's all that matters. I liked it last time too. All right. <laughs> so now I need to, um, I need to call Jerry. Yes. Um, so let me, uh, can I sit in my real chair? Yes, again? you can have your real Shall chair we, back now. You want to uh, just hold that up? Off and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap that up and take it out. And I love these. So they, they even get these um, St. Baldrick's Foundation, um, we call these bibs? Capes. Capes. All right, Capes. I'm going to step out of it. Yeah. Shake your feet, shake your feet. Hi, Emma. Oh. Mr. Tuft. Good girl. You want this in it? No. No. Yeah, sure. 
Look at that. I need a I need a tan on my scalp. That is pretty white. Hey. Awesome. Thank you. I'm gonna have a chat with Jerry. And then we may play. I may finally get to play. Oh wow. I need to make a button. I need to make a button that says ask me why I'm bald. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, Ryan, I'm going to disconnect with you and we're going to call Jerry. Can you hear me? All right, Ryan says goodbye. All right. Let's see if this works. I need to unplug this and plug in. We've got our super high tech uh, process here. All right, so I gotta put, the, oh geez, this is gonna be feel weird. All right, 741, we're calling Jerry a couple minutes early. Hopefully he's ready for us. Let's see if we get. All right, so I'm gonna switch y'all in. Um, There we go. Oh. Hold on. In that time, it stopped streaming. We had this whole system worked out. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry, one second. I think I have to drop the call first, and then I'll call you back. Uh, wait, no. We're still in the call. Dropping the call. We may have to call him on an audio call. Pranados, yes. I think uh, Pranados is a good Pokemon for you right now. Let me add. Oh, no. Not a nickname. That's That didn't need to be a thing. Uh, all right. Jerry, I think we're going to be relegated. Let me try it one more time. Looking for Apple TVs. There we go. Let's see if this works. Maybe if it's like if you if you get off FaceTime too fast. I can hear it. But can I see it? I can see it. I can see you. I can hear you. <laughs> Everything is I can working. hear you. Could we be I you'd solve it. so lucky? Uh, El Gato capture card. There we go. All right. Little nudge. Little nudge live. There we go. Hi. Uh, you look so, fantastic, buddy. You're, I, you're a good <laughs> egg for doing that. <laughs> look at that. Um, I gave Angie like a 48-hour notice. And then today we were like, Hey, Jerry, come on to Twitch. Have you ever been on Twitch before? No, it's the first time. This is the first time on Twitch. So you're now a, you're a, you're a Twitch streamer. Uh, you're playing Call of Duty or Shaved Heads in this case. Um, so we, we were talking, I don't know if you were, if you tuned in, but we were talking about, um, I had to describe you today. And I said, and, 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 and it was to Judy, um, that, you are a literal angel walking around saving Everybody. lives. And you, I know you, I know that you would never assign that label to yourself, but um, I don't know anybody who does a good deed and then immediately goes looking for the next good deed. <laughs> and, and you, you never rest on the, on the works that you've done. You know, we've, we've all had that adage all of us involved with the Peter Mayhew Foundation of you can't you don't rest on laurels you don't let the motion stop and it's works not words works above words and that's what defines everybody that jumps in the down on the ship here to uh, do the deeds that we do and uh, just feel very lucky to be able to have the great folks that we've all done this it's a family it's a team that does it all. I just get lucky to be kind of the hammer to 
get some attention to start it out. You're, you're on the front line, though. Every single time, um, you know, the the our our favorite story to tell is, of course, the little white lie that was. Uh, I'm a Time Magazine reporter. <laughs> I'm trying to do a, uh, get him to take my phone call. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's promptly told him that, that that it was to be able to get the phone call on with him, and he was he's absolutely good with it. <laughs> And so today we're talking about childhood cancers, and I know that you've dealt with illnesses of all varieties and, and diseases of all varieties, um, but can you talk a bit, um, I know the Atkins family is one that, that the, the foundation has been involved with and that you have been championing, to, re- and, and that's, can you tell us a bit about the situation he's in, because that's, uh, it, it's a horrible treatment that he has to go through. Yeah, it's, he has neuroblastoma, it's a, uh cancer of the nerve tissue and it uh, manifests itself on the spinal cord and basically anywhere uh, you have neural pathway and little Jeff has had it for four years, almost five years, and uh, they've been able to get him into remission twice. It's come back stronger this time. Uh, One good thing in this St. Baldrick's actually was on the front line trying to help forward this treatment called MIGB uh, chemotherapy. And what it does they put this this radioactive uh, isotope in with iodine, and they're able to direct it at the tumor and not surrounding tissue. So it's it's not you know when it when a child's already dealing with having his defenses down, it's not affecting other organs. One downside though, uh, it does stymie whole blood cell production when they do it. So when they go in to do this treatment, it's not just having an infusion and then. Uh, being discharged a day later. They have to wind up staying there two days, uh, having minimal interaction uh, with family, uh, basically just staff because it's radioactive basically for two days uh, and they want to minimize contact. And then they need to have a blood transfusion following that because uh, the whole blood cell production stymied. So it's just a, it's a rough road. Uh, This family's been going through it for four going on five years. And uh, the big need, like Angie was talking about earlier, is, and it's, as you were as well, uh, Ronald McDonald House sometimes can only take you for fits and starts, you know, a week here, a week there. And they're being treated up at the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital up in Northern California. Live down in Southern California. So it's, you, you have to have housing, you have to have meals. And it's overwhelming for a family, especially when they have another young one. And, uh, the Ronald McDonald House does whatever they can, but they have uh, so many clinical trials going on there that uh, rooms are a premium. So when the families needed to have find an ulterior place to stay and have uh, meals, it's been the wonderful heaven of having the Peter Mayhew Foundation come in and help put a roof over their heads and put meals in their bellies. And it's, you know, taking away the, the simplest worry uh, that they should never have to have. They should just worry about being able to take care of their, their kids, you know, and, and seeing through this treatment and being supportive and not having that worry about where am I going to stay? How are we going to eat? So that's the wonderful beauty of being able to do the things that we do. And it's just, it's, it's an honor to be able to see magic happen. Well, I, I take it on myself to toot your horn because I know that you never will, but I remember when when Kathleen was in the hospital that you called every area restaurant under the sun to uh, try to arrange <laughs> meals for her their fa- for her family because her family they, they couldn't go to work they they had to take time they were they were there and and Westwood is not a cheap place to uh, to get to get a meal but I, I remember you, no. you cold called every restaurant under the sun to say uh, hey there's this family uh, can we can, Even- can I can I get a gift card out of you. Even to to get a place to even to get a place to stay, uh, you know, most of the hotels around there, just to be able to have uh, Julianne and Chris within walking distance of the hotel. You know, most of those hotels that are right there next to UCLA Medical Center run four or five hundred dollars a night. I mean, that's just well. Did you see the very when, first? When she's in the hospital. Went, <laughs> the first forty-eight hours in that hotel. That was not a pretty hotel. Uh, they they bounced around to some different. Uh, yep. Yeah, glad we were able to get them into the, 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 the yeah, over there and uh, change, change the 
the locale. But it, that's the niceties of the Marriott Corp. Uh, we went to Stephen Marriott yeah. and it told him, you know, hey, this is what the per diem is for the military. Can you accept this? And they happily did. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just takes a, uh, the asking to set wheels in, in, in the process of and making things happen. And so, you know, sometimes you can do the little knock and sometimes you got to knock a little harder and and just not stop knocking until you find a resolution. And uh, that's what I love about what we're able to do together with the foundation and uh, and the wonderful work also that St. Baldrick's does in, in trying to help families and trying to uh, push progress on the research front. And I just, I didn't, even know until today when I had uh, was reading up more in St. Baldrick's how much they were instrumental in the MIGB treatment that the Atkins family is undergoing. Uh, they had uh, been on the forefront of uh, helping push for funding and development of the, uh, that medication and also uh, having it available in more locales because right now there's only 20 hospitals that do it and one of them being uh, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Hmm. Yeah, and that's um, that that treatment. What what his body, and that's something that um, that I, I hadn't been exposed to uh, before working with St. Baldrick's was we we hear somebody goes through chemo and then they're cured, and maybe the cancer comes back, but for the most part they're cured. They're not the damage to a child of winning against cancer is sometimes worse than the cancer because the damage to organs that weren't Especially done with developing. Yeah. 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 That, that then the life expectancy is cut dramatically by, um, the, the, the treatment, you know, and, and by what, you know, the, the, the body continues to, to develop these organs and, 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 you know, we're not done growing until 16 to 20 years old, you know, where different things stop growing. And if you're six years old, yeah. those are not your final organs. You know, you're, they're constantly rebuilding and growing. And, and if they go through that trauma, they don't, they don't finish that, that development. Come here, Emma. <laughs> well, the other thing is that um, survivorship, um, they say you're cured if you're five years, you know, free of disease. Um, and if you're 60 or 70 years old, mm -hmm. If you were 10 years old, five years out, you're still 15. And there's, you know, there's still a long time you know, for a lot of things to happen. So, um, you know, those those numbers are not, uh, are you know, are I'm not, I'm not gonna say deceptive, but they're they're misleading. You know, um, people yeah. want the happy, people want the happy, and I we get it. We want to celebrate the bell ringing. We want to celebrate the cure. We want to celebrate being free of disease. But there's so much more after that, unfortunately. Right. Have to consider. Well, we we saw Tasha's post earlier today. It's just, I mean, uh, about Chloe yeah. who who got to get to that point um, yeah. and, and ring her bell, and and that it's such a beautiful. I, I've got it still in one of the tabs over here, and it, I mean, she's got those beautiful uh, the bunny ears or, or um, um, cat ears or something on, and she went. Ears. And, what is it? I think they're kitty ears. Kitty, you know, kitty it's ears. Really, it's a lop-eared bunny otherwise. And, she's and she, tough as nails. I'll tell you that. That is that. That young lady is tough as nails and uh, really inspired when I had a chance to meet her last month. And uh, just I'm wonderful to see her be able to be out of the hospital and start on the path of, of, of good news and, and hopefully keeping it in remission for a long, long, long time, and hopefully for all time. Yeah, It's just a, it, it's a beautiful privilege to be able to see these fighting spirits. These kids are amazing and families are amazing going through so much and you know in, in living within the sterile walls of, of, of a hospital room you know it's doesn't always put you in the most positive of spirits but these families are just resilient mm. brave and it's a honor and a privilege to be able to spend time with them one of the things that the 501st legion does um that makes a huge impact is to go and dress up in star wars costumes and go to these children's hospitals and have a day of fun for these kids. And, and some of them are, they, they can't go home. There is, they're, they're not there for the week. They live there. You know, they're, they're not, some of them may not be able to go home. And, uh, the a Angie and I were on a panel 2017 celebration and 
I was really proud. We're getting up there to talk about the good and you're hearing about tears behind the helmet because they have to play this character, mm-hmm. you know, a mean stormtrooper that's there to arrest their little brother or something. And they develop relationships. They, they fall in love with these kids, you know, and they, they develop a, a family bond that is very, very deep. And, and the, the, the happy endings and the not happy endings, um, you know, and so my, my respect for the 501st, you know, some people may see dressing up as stormtroopers. It's, it's a fun thing, but there's a weight to that where, um, you know, you're, you're doing a service for a, a young person that, um, you know, has a real, a real tough road ahead. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll never, I'll never not sing their praises for that, for that good work that they're doing. Absolutely, Matt. Absolutely. Sorry, the, the, the dog. Just is, think of the, all the cry for Laurel. The, all the little, little stories that have come out, come out of the 500 first being in, uh, being in integral part of, you know, having these kids escape a little bit of, of what the day to day is, you know, of, of dealing with medications and dealing with pain. And then think for, even for a short while, get to escape a little bit and uh, be hanging out with their Star Wars heroes. It's, it's great. It's beautiful to watch when that, go that distraction. Days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Chewy said that for Jerry that that's you. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, yep. All in. No stop. <laughs> well, when I when I tell the story, this is a guy that cold called surgeons, the way that you might sell uh, coupon books for a high school uh, marching band, and it's hi. You nope. don't want to say no. no. Yeah. Right. Right. And and. Uh, Oi. Here's this but beautiful they, young girl, Kathleen, and she, she's got 10 days to live. Can you help? You know, it, yeah. it's put the literal facts in front of them. And I mean, that was just a miracle of miracles. And I mean, and it happened right at Christmas. And that was just uh, absolutely amazing. And then seeing some of these other success stories that happened because of uh, yeah. Kathleen's story being out there and, and other people getting in to be able to be treated and, and receive transplants and be treated for other things. It's just a, it's, anything I could say is people stay involved and, and do good deeds, do things by, by making actions and, and not just uh, lip service. It's it takes a little to be able to make a wee bit of difference in the lives of somebody. I mean, even if it's spending a hour or two to be able to go and, visit a family or some families at the children's hospital and take some stuffed animals. I mean, it's just, it's, they get a profound joy out of doing that and uh, let them light, lighten their mood for a bit and escape for a little bit from what the day-to-day rigors are. Yeah. Just bless, bless your bless bless your heart for doing what you guys did today. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, mm-hmm. Jerry, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we're going to wrap up and do our little bookkeeping on the way out, but thank you so much for, for hopping on and thank you for everything that you do and continue to do. Um, when, when you, you shock me completely an honor and, and then you surprise me even more when you push the needle even further. Um, it's a, it's a damn privilege to know you and, and we'll keep doing it, buddy. All right. I'll talk to you soon. It's a privilege to know you too. And, and we'll keep doing good things. Thank you, sir. Bye guys. Have good night. So you too. What a <laughs> hold on. Let me let me let Jerry off the hook. There we go. Um, that's better. <laughs> um, I know it, it, that that particular story is not a childhood cancer story, but just he goes to those lengths for any family that, that he has worked with. And um, he thinks of these things, he thinks of ways to help that that we don't. We need to set him loose on research now. <laughs> I, I was joking with him that 
He'll have his head shaved in no time. Oh, uh, you know what? Um, that goatee would go <laughs> for like thousands, thousands. They're coming for you, Cherry. <laughs> they're, they're coming for you. Um, all right. So it's 8 o'clock. Um, we're going to wrap up early today. Um, this Wednesday, we normally we stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 7 to 9 Central Time. Um, this Wednesday, we will finally be tackling uh, Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Switch. Emma. Uh, but the raid bus and our ability to raise that money would not be possible were it not for our Patreon video that's not loading. Um, let's try that again. Nope. Well, there's Patreon. <laughs> normally, normally, it's animated. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, but so this this list of people the, the Patreon has enabled us to buy bigger raffle prizes um, we're all ready to go for Alamo City Comic Con Halloween edition we're going to be raffling off one of the new Nintendo Switch lights um, we're going to be working with Veronica Taylor who is Ash Ketchum from the original Pokemon series that one's really exciting um, and uh, it, it's just we, we, we do the bus and, and we're able to make, you know, the, the impact that we can. But if it weren't for uh, the Patreon people and the people who really step up to, to, to go the extra mile, to help us go the extra mile. And then there is, <laughs> as always, in memory of Alan. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And we will see you next time.